So here's just a brief overview of the study. The study was done about two, two years ago. It was a primary, primary research that I did um, at a college I used to teach at. Um, I will talk about the context in a moment here. So here's just a brief overview of what my study entailed at that point and what I aimed at doing really. Um, I really wanted to make sure that I would enable my students to have, um, my international students, to have a shared, a communal, a, a physical, and a symbolic space that existed within our shared classroom space, but also went beyond that um, mentally and physically. And that really encouraged my diverse student group to share and also foreground their um, prior knowledge and their experience. Um, and that oftentimes gets kind of pushed to the sidelines um, of especially a college classroom. So here I mentioned to move their ways of knowing from the margins to the center of our collectively negotiated shared meaning making processes. What's really important, what was really important for me personally about this study and why I kind of came up with this is um, when I, I moved to the US from a European country right when I was 18 just to go to college and I was all alone there. I felt pretty lonely at times and I also felt um, dislocated to some degree. So at this current context, which I mentioned, I will discuss in a few moments as well. Um, I just, I wanted to make sure that the 98% students that were international at my former location um, felt inclusive, felt included, felt welcome, and really felt empowered by knowing that what they already came equipped with is incredibly invaluable, so important, so rich, so conducive to the overall learning environment. So that's how I kind of, that's the background of me even coming up with this, because it was so important to me to open up these shared spaces um, and include everyone physically and mentally. And as we can see kind of later on in the findings, um, students really perceived it that way too. So here are the objectives of the study that I had. Um, what I really wanted to do was I really wanted my students to, like I said, to use writing to foreground their personal experiences and to shed light on how important these already were. But I also wanted them to kind of reflect and examine on their existing multilingual, multifaceted, multi-geographical and interdisciplinary identities um, through text, textual production. And as I mentioned up here, um, writing is a mode of inquiry, which means that it really um, demonstrates how effective it is for students to write about information or content and then kind of analyze how their self-produced text enables students to kind of make sense of what they learned, wrote about, perceived, etc. Um, and this is, of course, very empowering because then you can kind of see, oh, this is what I produced and this is my knowledge. Um, further on, as I mentioned earlier, it was really important for me to create a temporal context zone where international students created um, individual voices, where we had a space, a safe space, really, where people could um, kind of, you know, grapple with questions pertaining to their identity. And, um, and I gave them specific prompts, which I will talk to you about in a second. And yeah, I, that was really important. And I mentioned temporal here, obviously, because we only shared a semester together. And so my students and I both knew that we had 16 weeks, essentially, um, to kind of work towards reflection, a lot of reflection, um, establishing a sense of identity, establishing a sense of belonging, but not only for the, for the individual students, but also for everyone else that was part of that class, including myself. So like I mentioned, here's the context. So this was a US-based college in the United States Midwestern region. Um, it was 98% international students, which is fairly high for the US, but it was wonderful, of course, in so many regards, because like I mentioned, um, I came to the US when I was 18 as well. So I, I always felt like I could really identify with the students and with the issue and the challenge and the opportunity of being dislocated and like trying to explore something new in a new location. Um, so here are just some of the features, like of course they were ling linguistically diverse, geographically diverse. Um, so, and even within, so I had a, a lot of individuals from 
Vietnam, for example, but within the Vietnamese culture, there are so many distinct differences. So they were not even like, oh, I have a student who's from France and another student who's from Angola. It was even within specific countries, the subcultural differences were also very prevalent and, and conducive or led to um, the course dynamic. Um, so, and I mentioned I'm, I'm using or I use this intercultural communication course. And the reason I did this is, first of all, I, that's my background. I always taught, you know, in the fields of, ES, of applied linguistics, English, and communication. So I was always teaching in all of those realms simultaneously. So I taught intercultural communication. And because my PhD is in uh, composition, I do believe that I, I have some insight into the importance of narrative writing and I really felt like that could benefit my students. In this particular class where a lot of times the students struggle to really understand the methodology, the, the concepts, the, the ideas, the kind of cold um, theories of communication. Like for some reason a lot of students in general just find this very distant for some reason. So I assume that if I were to implement narrative writing it would help my international students to kind of really feel because they were international and they had already experienced intercultural communication. They were doing it all the time probably. So I felt that this was the perfect course for to see if I could empower them and, and include everyone and create the space for everyone um, because they already were equipped with so much knowledge. So this was the course I chose um, and it was an interdisciplinary framework as I mentioned before. So this one was really communication and composition. So as I also mentioned before, I, I gave my students some writing prompts. So throughout the course, 16 weeks, um, we started with just general kind of questions. Reflect on how cultural elements or cultural elements in your own culture. And so this always responded to um, what we discussed in class. So chapter one is obviously about the basics of culture. So that's why I asked them, hey, what is your, you know, what does what is your cultural background? Let's talk about that. Um, number two, reflect on your country and what prejudices are common. How do you feel about them after reading and being in this class? So chapter two, reflection essentially. But these were narratives and I should also point out that I had set aside an entire class period for these particular items. They did not have to be shared. They could, of course, if anyone wants to share, that's always great. Um, but that was not part of it. This was not part of the grade. Um, and individual students were aware of that. So this was really just kind of a personal thing to reflect, but therefore also open up, broaden oneself's horizon, really internalize the knowledge and extend that outward to other participants in the class, which was really nice. Um, second, the idea of third culture, how have these little narratives affected your learning? And this one really, for chapter 11, already kind of sheds light on the metacognitive prompts that I gave the students. So the metacognitive prompts were really just, so now reflect on the writing. Now you've been writing this time. Um, let's look at that, let's look back at that and see how the writing itself has been conducive or not to your development of sense of self, sense of belonging, sense of inclusion, sense of other individuals in the class and simply understanding the course content. Um, so the question here was, for example, have our narratives helped you get a better understanding of yourself and yourself within the course content? So this was a really big one. Again, situating the student within the course, within him or herself, um, and also kind of analyzing how he or she has already dealt with so many aspects of the content material in this given course. Chapter 11, for example, so this was pretty close to the end. Um, how have these narratives affected your learning? How, um, how have our narratives helped you understand the course content or haven't they? That's fine too, obviously. These are all anonymous, so I tried to eliminate as much pressure from the students as possible. Um, and so, of course, you know, if they said, oh, this was a bad, bad idea, um, that was totally fine too, which no one did. <laughs> okay, so here are my findings. So it was really wonderful to see that this had been really, really effective. And honestly, after doing this study, I kept the narrative writing as every in all of my intercultural communication classes because the students really felt like they internalized not only content knowledge, but also a sense of being in this contact space. Like it really broadened their horizon in regard to other cultures, their own culture, their sense of self, and of course the material. 
So students wrote confidently and thoroughly about their past experiences that seem to be given new meaning through the course writing activities. So like I mentioned before, bringing in that past experience prior knowledge is empowering because oftentimes students come prepared to a class and don't really feel like they have anything to say. Although prior knowledge is oftentimes such a wonderful and such an insightful and such a yeah, just incredible source of knowledge. And oftentimes students don't really recognize that they already have all this stuff, that they're already equipped with so much information um, and knowledge. And so that was that was kind of given a new meaning that students were really like, oh, I knew this. I already experienced this. I do this all the time or whatever. And they realized this by reflecting, by writing about it. allowed them to reflect on their experiences and knowledge in a new way. That was really important to me. And then students eventually recognized the importance and significance of what they already were equipped with and what contributed contributions they could make. So here are some student works. This is primary research, some data from them. So these are just the highlighted ones that really stand out, kind of um, supporting that finding number one. From my own experiences with my culture, I can identify myself with some materials that I have learned in the class. So again, idea of you know self like I am understanding um, the material and I understand myself. It is necessary to know about myself to connect with others. I thought that one was really nice because it really emphasizes this idea of self in class, attaining more knowledge, more in addition to what already exists, and then kind of connecting outward to the others. So it really establishing this really, really yeah, this, this, this space of connection and really including everyone, understanding the self, therefore understanding, empathizing with other people and understanding them as well. So that was really strong, I think. I think this course has um, some connection with my own life experiences. Okay. The next one, students also made clear connection between who they perceived themselves to be. So again, more reflection at a point in the past, so mainly this was prior to moving to the US, and who they felt they might be now as a result of the lived experiences that were in the class context incredibly valuable. So now that they understand, oh, I already am, I have, I have such a rich background in this topic already. Um, so now who do they see themselves as? Prior, uh, now and prior to coming to the US, for example, just to kind of, and that's just what most people said. Most people, if you ask, you know, before the class, they really reflected on their experiences. This really marked, obviously, it was such an important or such a big deal in a person's life to move across the globe. So a lot of students really use that as kind of a marker. The students came into the classroom equipped with empowering resources in the form of prior knowledge and experiences that were and produced relevant and important course content. So then the students produced the course content. So they realized, oh, I have something to say. I have experienced all of these, you know, the methodology, the co content, the methods, the theories that are described here that are so abstract. I have concrete experiences that I can now contribute and that I can share that will include me in the classroom, that creates an inclusive sense, not only for myself, but for everyone else who probably has shared something similar. So here are some words. Um, sometimes I feel alone in the new country where I live. I feel they are different with me. They are not my people. The important thing is I'm happy and I enjoy my life with my culture and the other culture. So it's this kind of idea, again, of recognizing self, this, of course, it's sad. It really it was sad. Um, but recognizing the sense of, of, you know, self in light of the course content, in light of the other people's experiences, and then recognizing um, this is kind of a normal experience, you know, like to, to feel some kind of like a culture shock, essentially. And that's what a lot of people talk about was culture shock, that coming in and just feeling really lonely and to some degree and then being able to recognize that oh i have this knowledge it's now so integral um that's empowering and that's really that was really beautiful to see that the students were now moving on and were kind of happier i'm hoping that it was conducive to their happiness um another individual mentioned the only tool that i have um, is to speak english it is important for me to be open so that i can com be comfortable and live in our intercultural community 
so recognizing again that you know course content that's the things we were talking about where you know like be try to be open to other people include other people in your experiences let other people be part of your experiences um, of course, in the new, uh, beginning, it can be um, a challenge because one can be too attached to one's own culture, customs, or either um, or either one. Nowadays, I feel that I fit into a new culture easier than in the past. Okay, so reflecting on this writing, um, that now that I'm experiencing, I'm looking at back at myself, I'm looking at kind of this evolution of self, um, and now I feel like I'm doing it, it's easier, it's becoming easier for me. So that's really nice. Um, and then the last finding was a process of connecting prior knowledge to current course content emerged throughout the course and semester and yielded a very sincere, empowering, and reflective process for students that helped them to connect with their current context and prior experiences and knowledge. So here are some words. Um, so this is more based on the metacognitive work. Narrative helps me not only to understand the content of the lectures, but also come to know myself. And I think, again, this is so beautiful because it really emphasizes, um, you know, like understanding how one personally connects with the course material. And this is so empowering to understand oneself and how and making sense of the self. I think that's that's really what's happening here. Narratives help me a lot. Whatever I write down something in the narrative, I always think and reflect on myself as well. The more I write, the more I understand and know more about myself. Or this, for example, it helped me um, realize the limitation. The narratives that I've written in this class so far helped me to recognize what I've learned in the class and my own experiences. So some of the finds, students were able to use writing as a way to connect prior knowledge to current knowledge. And so that really was one of the big things that I really wanted them to do. I wanted my students to um, use writing as a way to empower themselves and use their prior knowledge um, to connect with the current knowledge and to thereby establish this inclusive space out of very, very diverse voices, create an inclusive space where everyone felt welcome because everyone felt empowered because they had so much to contribute to the content of an inter intercultural communication class. Connect with self and self in a new physical, geographic, academically, socially, and linguistic context. Finding their voices, which of course is always empowering. So what I can say in conclusion here really, here's my selective biography, is that the narrative writing really helped because it gave students the option or the, the chance to reflect on their prior experience, their prior knowledge, who they were, and then write themselves into this new context. And by doing so, um, they were able to, to all share this incident or this instance, this, this moment in time, these moments in time moments in time where we wrote together, where we shared our experiences, if they so desired. Like I said, that was not required, of course. But still, as you can see in the words of the students, that um, these opportunities really enabled my students to, to reflect on who they were, reflect on how important all of their knowledge really is and has been and will be. Um, and it really, really offered them a contact zone where they could feel safe, because they recognized also how powerful they were. So it really included everyone's voices to establish a really positive environment of confident writers, individuals, and students. Um, thank you very much for your time. I hope you've learned a lot from this and enjoyed it and just gained a lot from it. Thank you.